What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome. Thank you for uh, thank you for coming to the show here. Special show at an unusual time, I know. Uh, let's uh, let's bring in. So we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a, a great discussion here today uh, about CD Baby and Content ID. And I have a very very special guest who is gonna. Uh, really guide us through uh, some of this and uh, help us to become just a little bit more knowledgeable about, uh, you know, putting our music out because we put our music out on, uh, you know, shows like uh, You Rock and uh, Your Music Live and, uh, of course, uh, Metalhead Hippie, and Ron Ward and so forth. So, uh, and, and you don't want to have any issues there. You don't want to have any problems. You don't want to have like your song cause uh you know an issue with the show or anything so uh i'm gonna bring in my special guest this is uh nate petty uh of of course crimson crux so let me uh let me bring him on to the stage here hello nate how you doing hey guys thomas good to see you man all right great to have you with us here today uh let's just uh real quick let's say hello to the people that uh are rocking here with us tonight uh we got kid kane music in the house what's up kid kane we got, Great uh, interview last night. That was. It. Did you get a chance to to catch Frank's uh, show with Kid Kane and uh, Scars? Oh man, I'm gonna have to go back and uh, rewatch that oh. one. Uh, but I know that's gonna be awesome. Uh, he, did, he did an awesome interview with uh, Jade Star as well. Uh, we got uh, Pete here with us. What's up, Pete Johns? We got Mark Bro in the house. What's going on, Mark? Good to see you. Um, and uh, of course, Jade Star. She's out. Uh, film and walk with me, <laughs> but uh, have a great walk, Jade, and uh, thanks for popping in. Hello, uh, Aaron Auclair. Welcome, welcome. Uh, hello to Seagull Rock Squawk. What's going on? My lovely wife downstairs, <laughs> and uh, we got uh, Ashley HM here rocking with us. Hello, Ashley. Uh, Gordon Lee Weaver. What's going on? Uh, and uh, there's Crimson Crux. <laughs> All right. <laughs> cool um so uh let's get into this and uh before we really get into uh the nuts and bolts of um content id and cd baby um why don't you just tell us a little bit about um about crimson crux like uh you know briefly who you are how you got started and kind of like your journey as a band that kind of got us to to this point sure no i appreciate that man um well Crimson Crux has kind of been uh, a lifelong journey. It's kind of, it's more than just music, right? So, you know, my wife and I are childhood sweethearts, right? We first had a crush on each other when we were like 10 years old. And um, we've been on, you know, church worship teams together. We've played lots in lots of different musical settings. And um, when I was coming out of the Black and Death Metal scene in my late or my mid 20s, um, you know, I just, I, I still wanted to make music and I didn't know um, exactly what style. I mean, I wanted to, I wanted to rock, you know, but um, so I, I, you know, I bought a cheap acoustic guitar, you know, I, I think I went down to Reno Valley here in California and just bought like a cheap like $150 acoustic. And um, I started writing riffs and I had enough material and I'm like, you know, I'm going to make an instrumental album. I had a couple songs that felt like they needed vocals and that's pretty much how it started with our first album through divers temptations it started off as like a gothic folk you know um really instrumental album and uh we we threw vocals on and it, and i'm like okay this is really cool we didn't know what we were or what we were doing uh, it was T tanya's background is jazz and she's had opera training and and completely different but it sounded really cool with this gothic folk vibe that we were going from and so kind of it kind of just steamrolled from there you know going into um you know more like combining folk and electronica with our storyteller ep and then you know just we we ran into um this um this group back at home where we were reaching out to the high schools and and uh we we kind of did a, a a local tour out there and from there we kind of started getting into what i really wanted to do which was hard rock and so carousel our carousel album kind of moved in that direction but with it had a lot more industrial influence on that one I, like uh, <laughs> I did i did a fantastic job botching the mix but um it was very very muffled but it, it the songs were great and we're, we're actually going to be remixing some of those songs remastering them but and then from there 
that transition into where we are now with with this album and uh you know i we i really enjoy how these songs came out and uh without pete's youtube tutorials there's no <laughs> way it would be what it, it would have been so thank you pete but yeah that's basically how we and then um this community that this is that's how we ended up here was submitting our music to pete's channel first right on one of his your music lives i'm like Oh, mm -hmm. he does, you know, he has live band or he does, he reviews people's music. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm just, just for giggles. I'm going to send one in. I sent it in and it just, everything from there, just, it led from one thing to the next. And then it was, I, I think your show was second. And then, and then it was, I think, um, Ed B metal got on. He was like, Hey, you should, you should try Jeff's show. I got on Jeff's channel. And then that led to meeting Frank and then his show and then Ch yeah. Chad, it just, it's moved so fast. I can't even keep up with it now. So <laughs> that's basically how we got to, you know, where we ended up right now. That's awesome. That is awesome. So you use a uh, garage band. Yeah. It garage band on my phone. Yeah. Nice. Nice. You know, some, some people, uh, it, it's blown my mind, but some of the best music I've heard garage band on a phone, you know, <laughs> if, what I, what I learned, and this is where I really messed up between the Carousel album and, and, and got, I think, I, I don't want to ever say got right, but I think got much, much better on, on this release was I watching again, piece tutorials on the audio unit extensions. I learned where to put the plugins or the audio unit extensions correctly in the chain and Carousel, I did not do that. It was very basically. And so like I had the compressor in the wrong spot and I had, I, and I'm like, oh, well this fixes everything. And so it was, it was a learning curve, you know, learning to put things in the right chain. And once I did that, I'm like, oh, there we go. And all of like the sibilance and plosives and the vocals were gone. Now, all of a sudden, you know, now the compressor was, 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 um, compressing everything right. And the, you know, now the overdrive wasn't like way over the top. It was, it was more subtle and the vocals were kind of tucked in a little bit better right in the middle. And I'm like, well, that fixed it. So, um, yeah, I, that, that was, I think, the biggest difference. Um, it, it makes a huge difference knowing where to put those, but you can get some really high-quality stuff on GarageBand. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And Pete's your guy. Pete's your guy. If you need to know. He was, he's still our guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then when you graduate to more of the apps, you go on to Jade Star, you know. Pete's yeah, exactly. Your, Pete's the gateway drug. That's what we always say. <laughs> yeah, you guys are exactly right, man. All right, but we are not here to talk about uh, talk about the production as interesting as as that always is. But uh, we're here to talk about CD Baby and Content ID. And uh, so my first kind of uh, question on that topic is um, why? Um, now I know <clears throat> obviously a lot of us here in the community um, use DistroKid, uh, and that you know there's various reasons for that. But um, why did you decide to uh, go with CD Baby? Mm -hmm. What made them like attractive to you? So the main reason for us was uh, a couple things. Um, one, the the biggest thing I liked. Well, I mean, I guess to start off was back then there weren't that many distributed. DistroKid wasn't around yet. When um, we signed up with CD Baby, the two main distributors were CD Baby and TuneCore. That was pretty much it. I'm sure there were other ones, but the two main ones that everybody was talking about in the independent uh music community was cd baby has been around the longest and then tune core and those were pretty much you either had one or the other like my buddy travis is in another band uh, back at home and he had tune core and then we had cd baby and that's just the way it was mm -hmm. so the reason we went with it what stuck out what really stood out to me was the um one-time fee just pay once and your stuff is up there i mean theoretically your music is up there forever um it you know it's a little different take and i know like distro kid has you know the annual paying annual to keep the music up there which is that's fine that's that's their thing most streaming most um distributors are doing that um the reason i like that with cd baby is because like we talked about when i got sick and had my health issue um i had to walk away from my job i i we we were broke we had nothing and mm -hmm. i wouldn't have we wouldn't have been able to afford to keep paying and our stuff would have been removed from platforms my buddy travis had that issue he actually had his stuff removed from all the platforms and um he had to re-upload and go through that whole process again so um yeah so that was the main two things one there just wasn't there were only two distributors that i knew of around back when we uploaded our first album in 2013 and the uh, one-time fee and it's out there forever those were the two biggest uh 
you know reasons why we went with CD Baby. So you just pay you just pay like a you just pay a one time flat fee and you're covered. Yes, um, well, the way the way right the way it works is um, they have their set pricing. Um, it's changed throughout uh-huh. the years. Before it used to be I think nine ninety nine for a single and it was like forty dollars for an album and then they changed that to nine ninety nine for a single and I think it was like twenty nine it was like thirty bucks for an album and then um, what they have going on now um, is it's nine ninety nine period. For, I think it, I think this is probably to compete with all the other streaming services that are um, much cheaper um, at, at the get go. But CD Baby's thing right now is not it's nine ninety nine for a single, and it's nine ninety nine for an album. Either one, you pay that. That's for the basic. If you want to sign up with CD Baby Boost, what CD Baby Boost does is it's uh, I believe forty dollars. And what, what that'll do uh, for single or album, you pay the $40, it's 40, 45, it's something like that. Um, and basically what that does is uh, you pay that fee. It's a one-time fee. <clears throat> and what CD Baby Boost offers is registration with the MLC, uh, which is a mechanical royalty collections entity, um, uh, sound exchange, um, registration with sound exchange. Um, so basically they do the fo- footwork for you. You can, those are both nonprofit organizations, so you yourself can register with the MLC and Sound Exchange to collect those ro- extra royalties you're not getting. But uh, CD Baby basically for that forty dollars, they do the footwork for you, and then they offer social video monetization, which is a content ID and the sync licensing. So all of those things, the registration with the MLC, registration with the Sound Exchange, and um, the their um, in-house. Um, uh, offering which is um or option which is uh basically the social video monetization and sync licensing so that's how their pricing tier kind of works out you know you can choose basic and pay the mm-hmm. 999 pay the 40 and opt in for cd baby boost are you on are you on the boost plan we are and actually <clears throat> this will help touch on what we were going to talk about is we we did opt in for cd baby boost we opted in for the registration or the MLC and Sound Exchange, because Sound Exchange, for those that don't know, what Sound Exchange does is they collect your royalties from um, uh, places like uh, uh, AM, FM Radio, Sirius, FM, Pandora, uh, because you are not getting your royalties from those places if you're not registered with Sound Exchange. So, um, I have us opted in for registration with the MLC and Sound Exchange. I have us opted out for a content ID, which would be their social video monetization and sync licensing. So we're opted in for two out of the three. So that's kind of getting to the the heart of the matter here. Yes. Where, yeah. <laughs> so exactly. Now describe to people um, like what the process because we, we we may have uh, mm-hmm. folks out there who are using CD Baby and they don't know how to set that up so could you kind of ex- like walk through the process of how you might go about setting that up absolutely so i have a, i've got my phone open here right to the okay. uh, cd baby boost page so when you're uploading your album um you know i'm not sure if everybody can eh, it's kind of wide out there but anyway um when you on your dashboard right so when you sign up you it, it'll you know you select you know, the 999, right? It allows you to do that or do the CD Baby Boost, you choose. Mm-hmm. So you start entering all your information, right? You enter in the metadata, you enter in, you know, your tracks, upload the files, um, choose, you know, which distributors you want to, you, all, all of the whole upload process. So when you okay. come, when you come to the section that says monetization, or, or right after monetization, there's a section that says CD Baby Boost. That's just part of the process as you go from one thing to the next and you're uploading your album. When you mm-hmm. get to the part that says CD Baby Boost, it's going to offer you three things. It's going to offer you registration with the MLC, and there's a toggle switch. Uh, there's a toggle switch that you can turn on or off as you're, you know, when you're in this process. So you can opt in or opt out individually from three categories: uh, the MLC, Sound Exchange, and Social Video Monetization Sync Licensing. I have our toggle switch on when we uploaded our album 
for the first two, MLC and Sound Exchange, and I clicked the toggle switch off. Well, well, funny story about that. Actually, what I did mm-hmm. is it was late at night, and I was just freaking tired. And so I opted in for everything, and I paid for it and finalized it. Went to bed, woke up, and went, oh, man, I really don't want to do that. So I ended up getting back. And, and this is good for those of you that have opted in and say you change your mind because I did this. I woke up the next morning and went, man, I just don't feel right about this. I, 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 so I, that's why I sent you the addendums, which please don't ask me to go through. I'm not a lawyer and I will screw that up. With royal. <laughs> but, um, the I don't addendum, think any of us are. <laughs> no, the addendums are included in this video, folks. Um, Thomas was, was super kind and I, I sent him a bunch of links that might help out with content ID uh, included is uh, Pete has two videos on content ID that are fantastic. They're in the description on this video. Yep. If you have any questions on CD baby or content ID, there are a bunch of links in the description of this video, click on them. Uh, you'll find a lot of information, but so I woke up the next morning and I was like, I really don't want to do this. So I got back into our account and I was reading through their addendum going, okay, am I going to get in trouble, you know, for not giving them notice? Well, what's funny is in their social video monetization addendum, it um, mentions giving them, I don't know if it's 24 written notice, 24 hour notice, something like that. Basically they're, they're trying to address people that have already gone through this process. Their album is released. Cause you have to remember if they, if you register for like content ID and and all that stuff, their partners, they have to notify, right? So it can get in the content ID system. So if, if your album is released and then you change your mind after it's released, well, they have to notify everybody, Hey, pull this from the content ID system. Um, you know, the artist has not given their authority for you to use this. Well, our album hadn't released yet, thankfully. So there was no harm, no foul. I got on the next, I got on the next morning and I am just being kind of OCD. I am with, with, with the legal stuff here. Cause I'm horrible at it. I um, shot them an email sounding way more professional than I needed to sound. And um, basically asked them, Hey, uh, we want to opt out. Uh, I read your addendum, um, giving you a written notice. And I, I basically <laughs> got an email back that said, um, yeah, you don't need to email, email us for opting out of the CD Baby boost. It's just an option. You can click the toggle switch. I was like, oh, good, no. So, yeah, we opted in, and then I changed my mind the next morning and opted back out, but kept kept op- us opted in for MLC and Sound Exchange. So if you did that, you can opt out. Um, but if your album is released, you do have to give them written notice. So just email them and let them know you want to opt out, and they will opt you out. Um, it worked for us, so. Now, when you when you email, because I I have heard from some people mm-hmm. that um, they've had a hard time getting a hold of, of anybody through email, right? Um, so th- they were pretty responsive for for when you emailed them. I was I was surprised. I you know we've been with them for since 2013, and I've never had any issues with them. And surprisingly, every every they they have a chat bot like everybody does nowadays, and. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the main thing is your they have a little chat box uh, chat bot that you kind of go through and it answers everything. Um, but on their website they have an email like uh, CD Baby the cust- the um, customer service support. And um, when I reached out to them, yeah, they got back. Uh, I think they got back that next morning. So I was surprised, and it was signed off by somebody. I mean, theoretically, I'm, I'm assuming it was somebody. Uh, we're mm-hmm. that the day and age with AI, but. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did get something and, and somebody's name at the bottom that was, you know, addressed every issue or addressed what I had typed in the email, but th- yeah, their customer service did get back to me. I've had, um, other things with artwork, like on our, uh, we re- released a single from our first album. And when you do cover art, they, the, everything has to line up. So your band name, if you have yeah. a band name or that, if you have anything written differently, it will, it will reject it. Um, yeah, and that really, um, I don't yeah. even know that that's necessarily a CD baby thing. I think that's more right. like Apple Music and Spotify because I it, agree it, with DistroKid, you do the exact same thing. They, they, you submit all the stuff and then they check it and they'll let you know if you have to redo something. You know, that, um, I, I agree. And but when I, I reached out to them through customer service, when they had reached back, said, "Hey, basically, you know, you, you know, uh, they didn't accept the artwork," and um, I had no problems 
emailing back and forth and with this time opting out of um of uh the um content id option um they got back to me the next day so uh, yeah i was surprised i i didn't have any issues with their customer support okay so what would you recommend like if if people are having a hard time getting a hold of somebody just kind of like be persistent or I, I would I would I would just stay persistent at it. Um, their chatbot answers a lot of um, I think questions like on that first layer, right? You know, before it gets to the next level of of hey, now there's an issue, I need to resolve it. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just reach out through their email. They have their their customer service support. Um, um, and I know um, I know for for like simple stuff, you work for us. The chatbots are great. Because I have had to deal with that. I had a yeah, particularly it's frustrating, <laughs> it's particularly fr frustrating experience with Xfinity, because they they want to do everything. <laughs> they want to do everything now through we, everything. We have, Xfinity, we have Xfinity, so I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. We we um went through that um trying to get uh, a discount on something, and uh, because we we um uh we qualified for a certain discount, and uh, yeah, it was like two years later, and no, it was horrible. No. Still, their customer service is horrible. I mean, you can't you can't even like talk to a person. Uh, it, it, you no. have to. They they have things set up on both the phone and the chat where they, they kind of like triage to see like, are we going to let you talk right. to a person or not? Right. Uh, and and so. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It can it can be fr it can be frustrating uh, to deal with that, but sometimes like if it's just basic, you know, routine things, it would be it quick, really right? Out. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but no, I've never had any major issues with uh, contacting their customer service. They, it, it's it seemed to be fairly quick whenever I've done that. So I must be one of the fortunate ones. So I mean, if you've yeah. had that issue, uh, <laughs> drop it in the comments. Like I, you know, it, 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 I'm interested to find out if if you had another experience than us. But I, I we've personally, in I, I would say 11 years, I've I've never had one issue one issue with them. Yeah, and if anybody has any questions, um, please, please, please throw it in the chat. And uh, I've I've already got one uh, starred for a little bit later, so uh, I'll try to I'll try to keep up with those and start. If you could put a queue in front of it, that helps immensely. So if you got any questions, throw them throw them out there. Uh, in the meantime, though, I'm going to ask you about this, and I hope I hope you can answer this question. Uh, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and uh, but. Uh, so you you were talking about how you would take your um, tracks off of content ID if mm -hmm. you're in uh, the CD boost. What if you're just doing the 999 thing? Because I see here, um, well, that's not quite what I wanted. Uh, yeah, um, it says here uh, they they do content ID. This is with the the 999 plan. So how would that work if somebody's doing this this version and they want to? Um, so if you would, what what I would assume is that's not covered in their basic plan right so um or does it say right there is covered with it because um, it says monetization it says with monetization YouTube. with youtube content id so uh, that's interesting because when i was doing that i don't remember that being there from what from my experience uh uploading albums their basic plan didn't cover content id so i would have to go through the processing, which I mean, which I'll find out because we have um, our video that's our video that's premiering Thursday. I'm going to be uploading that single uh, this week for later on in the month, and uh, mm -hmm. I I can let you know when I go through that process. But um, from what I know from my experience uh, uploading songs, is I I was all, always under the impression their basic plan was basically. You upload their song and they distribute your single worldwide, right, to all the, the DSPs and, and all the places. And that um, that particular option, the uh, sync li the content ID and sync licensing, I was under the impression that is what was offered with uh, CD Baby Boost uh, in particular. So I, yeah. when I go through that process, I guess I'll, I'll find that out. But that's just from my experience, that's I, I was under the impression their basic plan did not cover um, – that so well yeah. <laughs> they may maybe they changed it because it does say it on here they've been changing a lot too i know um they used to have a thing called cd baby pro right and they uh -huh. ended that option august 7th of last year 
So CD Baby Boost is new. That's only been around since January. Um, and CD Baby Pro, they it was 70 something dollars. And basically they did the footwork and they registered your works with a performing rights organization. So that's how we got registered with ASCAP. And then uh, this last August, they nixed that plan. So now they don't do that footwork for you. They only register with the MLC Sound Exchange or do the content ID. And that's offered with CD Baby Boost. They do not do CD Baby Pro anymore where they register your works with a performing rights organization. So, Okay, so if you want to, if you want to like officially copyright your music, you have to do that separately through something like ASCAP or something. Like it's not gonna right, and and even then, um, it's funny because copywriting is a whole other animal. So like, yeah, the performing rights organization, right? ASCAP, BMI, CSAC. Most most people, I think CSAC's exclusive. I think that that's invite only. One of those is invite only. Um, mm. one of them's Canadian too. I forgot which one, but um, um. ASCAP and BMI, like we're with ASCAP. And so basically what they do is they're a um, publishing royalty collection uh, entity and they collect royalties for you to actually, it, this is a myth. I'm glad you brought this up because I'd seen this in a couple uh, live chats talking about, um, I've seen a couple comments of uh, people mentioning how um, this is why they go through content ID, you know, to make sure the stuff is copyrighted. Well, that it sort of, um, there are, there is a certain layer of protection with content id right so it, it's going to basically put a digital fingerprint on your music your song and it's going to scan you know the whole digital world for that match and then um get that royalty to you because you register with content id that is not the same as officially copywriting your music. Same thing with going through a um, performing rights organization. Those are royalty collection entities. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with, with sound exchanges, a royalty collection organization. Um, if so, that's you, just about getting the way know, the, the right the way the it's played on radio or something. You're going to get right, and that would be sound exchange. Right, the sound exchange okay. collects those royalties. Um, I think uh, man, I forgot the name of it not inclusive i'll look it up um but um the way copyright works is if you by law if you as soon as your work manifests right into physical form you're the copyright holder mm -hmm. you 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 own the copyright that's why when your distributor uploads your music and you have that little c next to whatever you know name your band name or whatever you know you enter in the copyright metadata um it there's a c symbol for copyright because if i have lyrics and i write them on a napkin by law i own i have the copyright to that they absolutely issue, you know if you write music and you go to if, voice memo you open up your voice memo on your phone you record something you are the copyright holder for for you own the copyright to that the issue is proving, proving it, it. <laughs> right the issue is i see you obviously like i said you you you've been this same down same road with research that I have and it's exactly proving it. So litigation is the issue. That's why there you, I would highly recommend copywriting your stuff through the U S copyright office. Um, we went on our first album. We went through that experience. They didn't have all of this, the way you could do it online now. So we actually called the number and it was, and it took a long time, like six months to get the letter back from them officially saying that it was copyrighted and stuff. But um, yeah, so copyright, you are the whole, the second you you put it in physical form, you're the copyright holder, but it is not, even with content ID, it is not officially copyrighted unless you registered your works with, I, I don't know how it works in other countries, but I know here in the States, unless you, you um, uh, register it with the U.S. Copyright Office. So content ID does offer a certain level of protection, but it is, it's technically not, like if you went to court and say someone uh you know tried stealing your song stealing your music you went to court and the judge you know you're in front of the judge like well i have content id that i that's not going to hold up you would need proof that that is that is your song your material um so that's that's kind of how copyright stands and i'm not a lawyer i don't exhaustively know that i'm i'm speaking from personal experience and just my own research and um, other friends who, who have been through this process. So uh, if you know something that I don't, please put it in the comments. I, I 
love to grow and stretch and learn, you know, about. Well, I like this. I like this question here from uh, Desolate Morning. What about taking it to a notary? Is that an option? I think I've seen that question before. Uh, I think I've seen that exact question before on on a YouTube video I was watching. I don't think that will hold up because it has to come from the U.S. Copyright Office. So I don't think going to a because I remember that question floating around out there on I don't I don't remember which channel I was watching. I don't I, I'm not a hundred percent positive, but I'm pretty sure that that won't hold up in court in court at least. Mm-hmm. It kind of goes back to remember back in the day when they tell you to uh, mail um, your uh, music to yourself because it had a postage yeah. thing. <laughs> And everybody will like, I, I did that. I had a four track, I had a cassette tape, you know, lyrics. And I remember mailing it to myself going, oh, I'm good to go. Then you find out later and it's not going to hold up. Well, uh, I've, re- I've read that other countries, actually, that that is a standard. Yeah, but in Pete, the United States, I guess it doesn't work in the United States. Correct. Pete exactly repeated exactly what I just said here. So Pete, Pete's on top of it. That's it, that's exactly right. That comment's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to prove. I kind of, I kind of just go with Pete's thing, where I just put it out there and I put it on YouTube and all these other sites, and it's got a timestamp and date stamp, and you know, I, I'm not. You know what? You know, a lot of people do. A, a lot of people do. Um, and the thing with con, I didn't know this either. With content ID, is multiple people is concerning theft. Did you know it is possible? I don't know how. But one of those articles that I sent you, it is possible for multiple people to register your song in Content ID. Um, no, I didn't know that. Yes, in uh, if if I can find it, uh, it is in one of the links. Um, it's actually in one of the links. Ah, oh, here we go. Here's okay. the link. the uh, The uh, Soundscape one. Um, let me scroll oh, down. Okay. Let me scroll down to the bottom. Okay, I think this is it right here. There's a section here. Um, this, what I'm about to read, this is in, um, Thomas has this in the link in uh, as a link in the video description. So you can click on this. It's the uh, Soundscape link. And yeah, Soundscape, I think it's the last one at the toward the bottom there. Uh, Soundscape is a mechanical license issuing company. So like if you do video or you're looking to license music, uh, this is what they do. So there's a section here. That goes, does content ID protect my, yeah, you've got it right there, my music from theft. So it says, we often hear from composers who say they register their music in content ID so that thieves don't fraudulently register their music in content ID. This is a misconception. While while content ID does offer certain protections for your music, registering your music in content ID does not prevent thieves from registering the same music fraudulently. It's possible for multiple users to register the same song in content ID and claim the same song. The bond paragraph is just repeating a process they go to prevent that from the, the previous paragraph. So, yeah, I read that and I went, that's really interesting. I didn't know that until I read that like yesterday. So, yeah. um, hence the importance of if you want your material actually copyrighted, going through the U.S. Copyright Office. Um, so... Yeah, Pete, uh, that comment right there. Pete says, even if you register copyright, if someone can prove prior creation, you could still be in trouble. People try to copyright other people's stuff. That's exactly right. And so that's basically what this that's basically what this section is warning about. So, yeah, that's exactly right. So, yeah, I was surprised when I read that. I was like, that is scary. <laughs> I mean, the amount of people that are it really registering is. multiple things on content ID and you're like, OK, well, who do they um who do they give credit to register it first? You know? Yeah. So. Well, and the other thing is too, like a lot of times I, the, the real, like only real copyright infringement that I see um, from people like in, in these kind of communities, independent artists that are just kind of making, uh, making their own music uh, from their own home studio. It's usually like foreign. Right. Where they'll, where they'll take the music. And I don't even know if those right. laws you know, because it protects you. Like, you yeah, know, I know you're registering in the United States, you're registering in the United States. I know about the other. I'm exactly yeah. like you, man. I, I, I know a little more, not exhaustively, but I, I know enough um, to kind of help us out and get us through things that we should or shouldn't do here in the states. But no, exactly right. When it comes to like other countries, Europe, I, I don't know what their policies are. So. 
that sometimes it's completely different. Yeah, that comment, the issues with AI, man, yeah. it, that's becoming a much, much bigger issue for sure. Yeah. Well, let, let me get into, because uh, he actually sure. asked the question earlier. Um, mm -hmm. uh, he just wanted to discuss uh, our takes on uh, AI and the usage rights of AI tools. We, and... could be here, we could be here all night if I could talk <laughs> on that. My personal thing with it is like, I think it's cool for creation because I do use AI art for some of the, like the sure. thumbnails and stuff because I figure I'm not going to, there's nobody, I'm not putting anybody out of work by doing that because sure. I'm not, I wouldn't sure. be hiring. I don't have the money to hire somebody to create art, individual artworks for each Could thumbnail that I produce. So yeah. I don't see a problem with that. Now I do see a huge problem with, you know, like if Coca-Cola is going to start using AI right. to create their advertisements, uh, if, you know, movie uh, theaters was a big thing with this whole um, uh, with the the actors guild and mm -hmm. everything where right. they were going to just take these people's likenesses and like, we're going to make movies with you <laughs> and we, we're not going to pay you for it either, <laughs> which they will anyway. Um, yeah, that's that's going I, that's not even a question that's going to happen. Um, and I'm not talking about like the Mandalorian, right? You know, Luke Skywalker and. No, I'm talking like that where they're going to be replacing that. That's not even a question that is going to happen. <laughs> it's, you yeah. know, the technology's there and, you know, yeah, man. So I don't want to get your channel banned. So I'm going to be diplomatic and very careful about this. Um, I, I've been warning about AI for a very long time. Like people don't understand. Um, so when, NF when F NFTs came in, the blockchain, right? Mm-hmm. Um, my personal opinion on content ID, this is just my personal opinion uh, from the research I've done is I think content ID is actually priming for, um, blockchain and things that are, that are coming like a social credit score and that kind of stuff. I think content ID is one way of priming. I think NFTs were a way of priming for that. And people don't know it's going to be here very, very soon. Um, 6G, 7G are going to power the metaverse. And and so Tanya's in real estate and her company EXP used to actually be like the metaverse. And mm -hmm. their company actually just went live and has a corner actually in the metaverse, you know, where you can sell like tiles, right? So that yeah. would be like digital real estate. Everything everything you see in Ready Player One, I'm, it's going to happen. So, and it's going to happen a lot sooner than people think. So. 6G and 7G are actually going to power um, like holographic imagery and all that stuff. And when Web3 comes in, our current format, right? So with, with, this is what I mentioned earlier, like with CD Baby, um, one time fee and it's out there. That's why I said theoretically, one time fee and it's out there forever. Okay, well, you know how we had like eight tracks and then we had, you know, uh, all the cassettes and then we had, um, you know, CDs. And okay, so like eventually MP3s and 4As, waves, those aren't going to exist. It's going to be a different for when Web3 and 6G and 7G and the metaverse that comes into play, they're going to be different formats for the music that we have now. It's going to be completely different. So my issue with AI and where it's going is a lot of this stuff like content ID, I see as priming and like what you said, using it for artwork. I totally understand that. Like every, people are making videos and yeah. the, as a creative person, you see that go, okay. You know, that's the, I can do this with this, or I can bring this song to life and tell a story using mm -hmm. it. I totally get it. I've got friends that use it. I bands that I follow use it. I totally get it. Um, the dangers with AI and the things that I'll just leave it at this: the things that are going to happen very soon, people are going to wish they didn't open that Pandora's box because it's there's a lot of things coming that people aren't ready for. So. <laughs> Well, I mean, and, and I, I worry about it. They, they've already started adding a, a thing that you have to do this on YouTube now. You have to say whether your video contains anything that's like... I read uh, that. Yeah. yeah that, that's like that. created by AI or it's uh, imitating reality or something. Uh, but I do worry about like uh, them using the AI to uh, create videos of, of, you know, powerful people and stuff saying stuff they didn't actually say. And then how are you going to prove it? And... It gets it gets really messy with with that uh, with that kind yep. of usage, but the creative side of it is is also very you know exciting. Oh, I agree. A lot of yeah. I I really like what Aaron said uh, up here, um, right here that uh, you know the it needs to be controlled. 
they they need to they, they need to figure out some kind of a regulatory framework for this that I make it fair and equitable. I completely agree with that statement. And what I would say to that is it's already too late. Based on there's other research that I've done, it is going to get out of control. And um, I'll just leave it at that. There are things coming that I don't think people are ready for. So it's I completely agree with you. In, in I think theoretically in a perfect world. You guys are 100% right. It needs to be regulated. I think the agenda at hand, though, it is where it's at because that's the way uh, they want it to be. Um, so, But in theory, I agree with you 100% on that. And I, I definitely agree with you that I could see alternative formats coming up because the, the, the industry – they're not uh they're not they're not uh they're they haven't been doing so well since the advent really since napster you could really that, right. that open the gates <laughs> it was right. like uh-oh music is out vision. on the internet what can we do about this i still and they've vision. tried everything under the sun to get this under control and they just can't and I then they finally just it. gave in and said we're gonna we're yeah. gonna we're gonna charge you know the, the small amounts of money but unfortunately you know the artists are, are yeah. of course always get the short end of the stick on that um, i still see metallica in the courtroom you know doing the whole napster versus napster. Yeah. <laughs> well, you but said you know if they could come out with a way to um you know create a new format where you you you, you have to pay for it and somehow they can right you know tie it to they, to the payment they tried, they tried updating are you familiar with the music modernization act that that happened uh, i think a few years ago no so so what you're talking about it, it is kind of what they tried doing not not with what we're talking about for the future so basically there was a period of time there was like 40 40 years where the music industry was old and antiquated and had the same payout system so when all these dsps the digital service providers came in at spotify and all streaming services basically what happened is that's why we were getting screwed so bad. We're still getting screwed horribly. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, we make what? After CD Baby t makes their cut, I'm making 0 .002. I did the math on Spotify. Um, we'd have to make a million streams to get like a three or $4,000 check. I mean, we're never, I'm just telling you for a fact, we're never going to have a million Spotify streams on a song. It's just not the way it works. The system is against all of us independent artists. But for, oh, yeah. for 40 years, there was, things were done the same way. So what happened was, I think the U.S. Copyright Office enacted the Music Modernization Act, which basically um, it did exactly what the title says. It modernized the way artists are paid out, like their royalties and collections. And, and this, in, in, during this time frame, I think it was a couple years later, that's when the MLC uh, uh, came along. Um, and uh, so what they should have done and they didn't do they should have completely wiped out the entire way that the royalty system was set up when they established the Music Modernization Act. Instead, what they did is they made it more convoluted. What they ended up doing was, so now to collect all your royalties, right? You've got to go through, you've got to go to the Harry Fox Agency, Sound Exchange. You've got to go through, right? You register at the MLC. Like there, there are all these, you know, all these with sound scan. There's all these different royalty collection entities and registrations. And, you know, we're registered with ASCAP and BMI, et cetera, et cetera. So basically what they did, instead of doing something that made sense, they took all of that and went, okay, we already have all this. Now we're going to include the MLC. You're like, well, thanks for making that more complicated now. And so that basically what they did with the Music Modernization Act was they made things more convoluted, you know, but, but the one thing that was included in that was they have to rotate judges that make this decision rulings on stuff. Because before, you could have one judge slap his gavel and like, well, there's your next 40 years. Because I went through this with the medical industry with Kaiser when I couldn't, we couldn't sue them because there's a law that was established in the 70s in California. You, even if you died, your family couldn't collect more than $250,000. So we, no lawyer would take our case. Because it was an old antiquated system. The same yeah. thing is the same thing with the music industry. You can't. It's an. It, it. It's. It's so convoluted. It's ridiculous. So the Music Modernization Act, to me, other than having forced uh, different judges to rotate on the rulings and stuff, it to me, it's just more convoluted than what it was before. So that's my rant. I'm. You know. <laughs> that's my rant i'm sorry no 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 it's fine <laughs> that's great actually um i mean it's not great it's not great 
but yeah. it's great to know about it because the whole systems you know, against us as independent artists. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of, I think we all have a sense of that. Um, and, uh, my wife says here, Rashida Tlaib working with the United Musicians and Allied Workers has introduced Living Wage for Musicians Act. Yeah. Y'all should be, uh, watching and supporting that legislation. Yeah. I, anything to help us, I'd be completely I, on board for because we're, we're, in, we're still getting spanked horribly through royalties. It's not even what I, you know, I'm glad you, you did that, um, session with Pete on, on, um, garage or, uh, uh, uh why am I, the, uh, why am I blanking? Um, <laughs> bank, bank, on bank. And, um, so we did, we actually, for the first time we set up, uh, the album on Bandcamp and, uh, did, nice. did, did see a little profit come in from that. And so I think like what, what you guys are doing, the way to monetize really to get outside of royalties, the way it's the biggest way that I found it, it's merch, you know, merch Absolutely. sells, you, you make more money off merch probably than you will make anywhere, anything off royalties. Um, so merch touring, I know some of us tour, I know my situation's different, but, um, touring, if you want my personal opinion on content ID, I, this is for us. I, I'm just not a fan of it. I think there's too much yeah. control. I think there's too much tracking and tracing. I understand the royalty end of it. I really do. I understand in theory, I understand oh, well, other people are playing my songs. I should get a cut of it. I, I totally understand. I would say this. If you're a bigger artist, Taylor Swift, if you're Billie Eilish, if you're, I don't know why my mind's blanking on the big rock, you know, bands, but, you know, it's the era we live in. But um, all the, the big label signed artists, there are so many people using their music. They are missing out on so much money if they don't, yeah. if they aren't, with, if they don't have content ID, right? People like us, I'm telling you from personal experience with friends that I know that are also independent musicians. I personally don't know any personally don't know any independent artist that is making a sustainable or living wage off of royalties. And you yeah. just, we're just not, it, it, it's, 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 as you would say, it's, it's, it's felonious, you know, I mean, just what, 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 what we actually our take of it is so ridiculous. I'm I don't think we're ever going to get it. And my other rant, I won't go off on it, but is um, it's I personally it's designed that way. Yeah, you know exactly, and that that's that's the whole nice that's speech. the whole uh, you know situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, I was going to post the link in the chat here. A really great video. I should probably put this in the description too, because uh, I was talking with you about Ben Jordan earlier. I don't fully you understand what I'm going to to put in the chat. I watched it, but I don't fully understand it. But he really breaks down like this whole, um, you know, you you've probably heard about like Spotify um, cracking down on on like fake music and stuff, and um, that's why they're not going to pay artists that don't have a thousand streams I, and everything. When you're ready, when you're ready, I I want to piggyback off that with a certain distributor that like we talked about um there's a very heavy tie into what you just said about something i want to touch on later yeah but he um uh, as i understand it he's working on creating his own mm -hmm. distribution service that you know he's claiming is going to be a lot better this. yeah i he's, think he heard of this yeah uh yeah let, let me see if i don't want to actually play this video oh this is the thing um all right uh oh yeah i don't have uh i don't have my computer audio on anyway so that's fine um i don't know why i always look so confused on these live streams like i'm looking at my face and they're like, there's this like painful angst on my face like you know pain or something oh he doesn't okay he doesn't have in there about his uh if you watch the video he's he's coming he's coming up with some kind of a new distribution service which i think is going to be awesome uh if it gets off the ground um because i, I think know. i have heard about this i don't remember anything that i heard from it but i do remember this popping up um when i was looking up some of this stuff before in the past all right um so what, what were you, you were just going to get into something oh if, if I, you had mentioned something about um Gosh, Thomas, we're getting old because that, that's me too. Um, no, you mentioned something. I mentioned something about it. It was a specific distributor. I'm trying to backtrack here. Um, 
and it had something to do with um oh uh was it spotify and like cha- their they changed their policy for payout right right, right? Right. So now if you is is it the minimum like a thousand if your song doesn't have a thousand streams, you don't they're no I think that went effective in January, they're no longer they're not gonna pay you unless you have a minimum thousand streams on a song. Right. Um okay, so there's a specific distributor um that from what I've heard in videos that I've watched, um like so that specific distributor is is very popular. Uh, in this community and and like I said there are things with ours too but this this just ties in specifically to what you were mentioning on the Spotify thing so there's a video that I watch if I can find it I'll send it to you okay um if you look up this said distributor and you look up bot playlisting there is a massive massive thing going on with this distributor and speculation because I, I don't want to put my name on it because I can't prove it but the videos are very compelling and it's more than the videos if you go through the comment sections you would be surprised how many people um, really got screwed over or got the bad end of the deal from uh, this specific distributor again I'm saying this happens with all of them so I'm not, I'm not I don't yeah. want to just single out one there are things and that, about that, and that was really kind of what what Ben's video was about too. There, you know, there, it was, there are things about ours that I I'll be clear on. The that problem the problem with, is with the whole system, and it's not just any one thing. The, the bot playlisting, though, okay, there is a there is speculation, a heavy speculation on that that the reason Spotify changed their rules was because of this said distributor. Because the speculation is that Spotify has a stake with this specific distributor, and there was. There was bot playlisting by this this distributor, and Spotify changed it because they were paying out. Be, they were paying out more than they should have because there was bot playlisting going on, which I know a few years ago there was a a lot of people uh, that had gotten their content removed. My one of my, my buddy was one of them, uh, and I asked him, "Hey, I, I noticed yourself isn't on Spotify or those other streaming platforms," and he goes yeah our distributor took it down there was an issue and i went really and it was a long time it was it was gone and then i ran across these videos literally just i think last month and i went that's really interesting so i'll send you i'll send you the um the video if i can find it and go through the comment section it's very very interesting so yeah no i agree i the comments in there you know these all these distributors are there's stuff going on with all of them and i think us independent yeah. artists get get the worst of it we might actually be talking about the same thing because Ben, the whole thing with Ben. Oh, really? Really? With him, you know, getting his music taken down. That happened to my, my buddy. So. That happened. That's cool. That's interesting. That's interesting. I'll see if I can find it. I'll send you the video. You're really going to, you're, you're really going to want to. Yes, Pete, that's a really good point. We yeah. now have revenge bot playlisting people, uh, botting their rival songs to get them kicked off. Okay. So I, I literally just came across a video about this a few weeks ago. There was in I'm, I'm telling you, Thomas, I'm going to send you this video. There was a lady that actually had this happen by the record industry. So there was somebody. She, what happened was she, she her song got taken down. Off, she got a notice from Spotify that, hey, we took your song down. Basically, the reason was bot playlisting. And she goes, I didn't have that song in any um, playlist. Like I didn't submit it to any playlisters. So what happened was she goes, this took her months to find out. I don't know how she found out, but apparently somebody, excuse me, somebody in the record industry viewed her as competition. They created their own, they created their own playlists, botted playlists, and they deliberately put her song on those playlists. And, and that terrified me when I read that. I go, that can literally happen to any one of us. And so basically as someone from the record industry made these bot playlists and added her song to them, it triggered Spotify's algorithm and it removed her song from Spotify. So wow. yes, I'm glad. I'm glad that beat yeah. brought that up because I, I I literally went through the comment section on the video and saw the exact same thing. It's scary, man. <laughs> it's super scary. Yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy, you know. Um, but uh, hello, Ray. By the way, hello, uh, Ray Pierce. Uh, the link is in the description of the video. It's in all my videos, but just uh, just check down there. Uh, 
but uh, anyway, um, let's see if there was any other questions that we didn't really get to. So, um, generally speaking, um, you know, we, we're very concerned. So what do you think causes uh, songs that get sent into shows to get blocked? Because uh, the, the the whole thing that, that inspired this was uh, I did a show a few weeks ago, and it's funny because now that that actual right. uh, <laughs> you rock show is uh, is free and clear, and you don't uh, like I I had to re-upload it because there was a cover song in there, um, which uh, and also a, another weird thing happened where the video got marked as some a music playlist which I had never heard of before in my life, uh, Gee, but. Man. um <laughs> So, so and the effect the effect of that is you can't edit the video because usually you could just like go in and you can use YouTube's uh, uh, editing tools. They'll let you clip out the offending part. That's you know that that's usually what I do with those kind of things. But um, because of this being marked as a music playlist, and I, I wasn't able to edit out the songs that were were tri tripping the uh, the block. So so I had to I had to download this entire you know five hour show or whatever, edit it. And then re-upload it, and then now it's actually it's actually there, and it's public. So I don't know. Sorry, Thomas. I just saw a comment here. Set up by Marshall it says, "Please, please steal my song." Yeah, <laughs> really, really. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, uh, Marshall. I mean, yeah, just yeah. Please, please steal our song. <laughs> I feel like we're all on borrowed time as independent artists. I feel like it's just a matter of time. But it's... Oh yeah. Okay. So to answer your question, Thomas, we, yes. we there's a couple things. Um, I, I think we could do here. Um, there's a section here I can read, or um, if if you want, um, go briefly go through the links in in that order because I think it will answer the question um, as as in the last section when it gets to it. Or I can read if you have more questions. I can just read the little section here to answer that. However you want to do it. All right, no, let's uh, let's go. Let's check these out. So we'll we'll start off okay. with the first one: uh, YouTube yes. monetization basics. Yes. So. Um, yeah, you want to read me to read it? I mean, how, how do you want to do it? I maybe, maybe give us like the, the cliff note version. Yes. Okay. Um, so some of these, um, I'll read straight through and there, there are sections that I'm going to skip. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to hit the stuff that's, that I feel is, is, is pertinent because there, there are like this next section, you know, why should CD baby help me monetize my music? I, we don't need, that's not what we're here to address. So. So this first section, you know, as you can see there, it says um, content ID is YouTube's automated scanning system that enables copyright owners to identify YouTube videos that include your original content. Here's how it works. Now, remember, these links are taken straight from CD Baby's website. So these aren't just some random links. You know, I, these are from their official website. So here's how it works. One, CD Baby delivers your music to content ID. Your audio files are used as a reference for scanning. Number two, the content ID system scans all the videos on YouTube and places a CD baby claim. So this kind of goes with what you were saying. The content ID system scans all the videos on YouTube and places a CD baby claim on any videos which use your sound recordings. A sound recording is your music audio file. So it's getting slapped with that claim right, right off the bat. Number three, YouTube places a content ID claim on the video in order for CD Baby to collect revenue generated from the use of your music on your behalf, which we know. This does not mean CD Baby owns your copyright. And then it said, number four, it says any revenue generated from the claim video will be reported to CD Baby on a quarterly basis, blah, 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 blah. Um, so basically, you can see here that it's a digital, what is content ID for those, maybe the are those that haven't dabbled in this or have no idea what we're talking about. Content ID is a digital fingerprint that the system uses, and it covers more than just YouTube because we're dealing with it on Facebook and Instagram and pretty much in the whole digital world. It's a digital fingerprint that gets put on your music that helps the system identify anybody else using your music. And what CD Baby does here is it slaps a CD Baby claim on that because they are there to collect... <laughs> That's funny. They're, they're there to collect royalties on your behalf, but they're, they're really there to collect royalties on their behalf because that's how they stay in business. So yeah, that, that's that. Now, I so, will say as somebody who does this, like I'm mm -hmm. uh, especially as somebody who's not monetized. I'm not. Uh, so I don't have a thousand subscribers. I do have the uh, I do have the super chats, um, but uh, I don't have like the ad 
monetization because I'm not, I don't qualify for that yet. So really not at all concerned about copyright claims. Those are perfectly fine. Right. They don't affect the visibility of the video. The the things I the artist can is, remove them too. The, the the artist can remove it too. So it, it, right. it, you're still you know active and, and safe. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I worry about is blocks because that prevents the show from being seen by anyone. So and the, the last section here will definitely cover that. So I, I think in this section that that was the first section I wanted to, and it kind of segues into the next section. So we don't have to go through this whole link. That first part was basically defining, um, exactly what content ID is. And this is, this is CD baby defining what content ID is more specifically, which is why we're here in the first place. So this mm -hmm. kind of ways to our next section where um, eligibility for monetization. Mm -hmm. um, if we scroll down in that same link, this will segue to our, to part two, the other link. But um, so eligibility for monetization, it says public domain and cover songs are ineligible and will not be delivered to YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. That's because anything that's in the public domain I think that's pre nineteen twenty something. It would be the, it would be the year that Steamboat Willie from Disney came out because he went into the public domain January of this year. Yeah, so, that was just recently. Right, right. That was in January. So in anything that's pre nineteen, it's nineteen. I thought it was nineteen twenty seven. Uh, I'm I'm lost. But pre nineteen twenty something is your music is categorized as public domain. So that means it's public domain. You can use it. But that also means you can't put that in content ID because it is public domain. Um, the content ID wouldn't be able to go, oh, that belongs to so-and-so because it's public domain. Uh, and cover songs are ineligible and will not be delivered to YouTube. This is coming from CD's, um, CD Baby's website. There's licensing with that. I know with cover songs, I won't get too far into it, but there are basically three categories to cover songs, right? Most of us are doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. The reason we're getting away with it is because Pete did a video on it and he hit on exactly what I was going to hit on. So just watch his videos on um, content ID. They One of them explains uh, the role of cover songs in them. Um, now, let me, can... let me, let me interrupt and ask you this. Oh, go though. ahead. Um, I'm just rambling. With, so go ahead. No, yeah, no, you're fine. Uh, with, with CD baby, mm -hmm. I, I know with distro kid, they have an option. You pay an, an extra fee when you release the song and right. you can, you can do a, you can release a cover song. And you pay an extra fee for the license, and they and they actually acquired the license for you. Does CD Baby have anything like that? Now I don't know how that works with Content ID. I would still assume you don't actually own the song. You're being permitted to use it. I, I'm not really completely sure, but maybe um, maybe you can shed some light on that and how that works at least in CD Baby. Right. So it sounds like with DistroKid that they have a partner company that they probably go through. Mm -hmm. um, for, um, for cover song licensing, or they somehow have acquired uh, the ability to do that themselves. Um, so with CD Baby, th what they CD Baby has partner um, companies that they that they uh, refer you to for cover song licensing. Uh, we've covered two songs. We covered the Andrew Sisters by Mir Vista Shane, and we covered um, Ain't No Grave with popular popularized by Johnny Cash, written by I forgot the guy's name already. Um, the old, old guy. Um, we went through two different companies. The first single that's not around anymore, I think they were called Louder, L O U D R. And I actually mm -hmm. acquired a basic cover song license from them for the rights to cover that song. And um, with Ain't No Grave, I went through, I forgot the name of the company, but I went through another cover song licensing company that was a partner company with CD Baby. Um, and that's how we got our songs. But CD Baby doesn't offer cover song licensing themselves. They have so you have to you have to go to a, another licensing like uh, like Mix Club mentioned Harry Fox, which I think don't quote me at all because I'm probably wrong. But uh, I think maybe DistroKid might actually use Harry Fox. There we go. But of course Pete knows uh, DistroKid uses know. Harry Fox. There we go. That's what yep. I thought. That's what Pete said there. You can't add YouTube content. So it sounds like DistroKid is, is same thing with CD Baby. Because that's what it says here that uh, cover songs are or public domain and cover songs are ineligible and will not be delivered to YouTube. So it sounds like, <clears throat> right? Sounds like what Pete was saying that Distro Kid CD Baby do the same thing there. Um, but uh, because I'm old and totally forgot the question you asked, um, uh, if you want to run it by me again, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think we covered it. I think it was, it was just okay. kind of asking um, like. Um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. You have the cover, to the cover song, the company. Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, on CD Baby, what they do is they list it on their website. They have their partner companies. Like, we went through a company. They have so many other partner companies. One of them was Radio Airplay, which is how we uh, distributed our – or we um, went through them for, like, additional spins, Radio Airplay, a while ago. They have other partner companies for song licensing and other things, too. So we went through um, – a specific i forgot the name of the second cover song licensing company we went through but that's how we did it through cd baby was through a partner company um a lot of another thing about cover song licensing that i think it, it is critical that a lot of i think this community uh, might not be aware of is there are three um kind of categories of cover song licensing right there's public domain there's basic or what they call compul compulsory or basic cover song licensing and there's mm -hmm. and there's cus there's custom cover song licensing, right? So if it's public domain, that's everything pre nineteen twenty something like we talked about. You can use it. There's compulsory or basic cover song licensing, which is what the majority of people are doing now. Custom cover song licensing is technically, if you're going, not even technically, if anytime you add visual to a song that you covered, technically you need a, a custom cover song license, and it's a lot more expensive. There's a lot more red tape. You have to talk to the copyright holder negotiate what they want it's it's convoluted but where people are getting away with this on youtube pete actually touched on this in his video i, I was like i couldn't believe he covered it and well this is fantastic mm -hmm. so youtube basically has a list right the reason most of us are getting away with covering a song without getting a custom cover song license and able to make a video for it and posting it to youtube and not getting any claim or anything like that so basically, the PROs, the performing rights organizations, the copyright holders, there is the last time I checked, it was like 50-50. You have copyright holders in a camp that have an agreement with YouTube that allows YouTube to allow their users to cover their songs. Well, there is also another camp of copyright holders that has not given YouTube permission. So when you cover a cover song, you have a 50-50 chance that your video is going to be okay and you have a 50-50 chance that it's not. Most people haven't had that much of haven't had that big of an issue with this. I know Pete in one of his videos had a list that you, you he had a link you could uh, click on and it actually showed the list of um songs that are eligible and songs that aren't eligible on YouTube. But that's a basic compulsory cover song license. If you want to get your music on Spotify, any of these DSPs, these digital service providers, usually you can just get a compulsory basic cover song license and you're good to go. And the reason that you don't have to keep, I, I will say this, if you, if you make a Bandcamp, if you go through Bandcamp, iTunes, anything where someone is buying your cover song, you need a compulsory or a basic cover song license because, and usually when you register with that company for cover song license, they will ask, the, they will charge you based on how many uh, sales, physical sales that you expect. So I think I had ours set at like 2,500 or something like that. And we paid X amount and it goes up or down based on how many you choose, right? Um, now with the digital service providers like Spotify and, and, um, and uh, Apple Music and those places, they all, by law, they already have to pay for that. That is why when you do a cover song and it's uploaded to Spotify or Apple Music, you're good to go indefinitely because that service already has to cover that. So I just wanted to touch a little bit there for everybody that's doing cover songs and stuff um, because there's a lot there with public domain and compulsory basic license and custom, but that, that's basically how that works. Um, yeah. Public. Well, I think it's also too what what I always thought was nice about YouTube is that you put something like that up. Now, on most things like if you go on Facebook or you go on Twitch or any of these other places if you do a cover, there's a there's a good chance that it, it might it may just get like it may just get you you actually get like a strike for it. Right. Um, whereas on YouTube, usually the worst that happens when you upload a cover is they claim it. Right. And so the any you know, views and stuff. If there's monetization, yep. they can put an ad on a video, even if you're not monetized right. and any of that money theoretically would go to the copyright, to the, holder. to the copyright holders. Yeah. Um, uh, now there's we some, have, we actually have one cop, not, not, not copyright strike, but not even uh -huh. it's, we, 
we did a live version. I just, I, we were in New Mexico. We were there for a funeral. And uh, no, no, we went back home. This is after I broke my hand getting back from New Mexico. We, uh, we shot a music video. I, I had my uh, phone out. And um, we did a cover of The Civil War is the one that got away. It wasn't professionally done. It was just basically a voice memo. And we put a video to it. And um, it was fine for years. And all of a sudden, the content ID thing became a thing. And so I checked our YouTube channel last year to find out that there was a claim on it. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know. So I went to it and it goes, this is not a strike. And it's basically saying it was perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. You don't, the copyright holder uh, uh, gives permission for this song to be used. So yeah, it, it, covering a song, it, it's 50-50. In our case, the cop because Civil Wars don't, they're not around anymore. So yeah, um, yeah Pete, I agree with you. Um, but yeah. Um, I think it's a mess now too, but I agree. I, I agree with you. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's basically, like I said, with cover song licensing, public domain, you're fine. Compulsory basic cover song license is if you need, uh, if you're going to do a cover and you want to get out there on the digital service providers or, uh, you know, if you're going to sell it, uh, and then you need a custom cover song license if you're going to add visual to it. But again, like we talked about on YouTube, you have a 50, 50 chance that you're covered and won't need to get that license. So, yeah, and the problem comes in like like uh, Marshall uh, had said here. Um, they 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 do deserve to claim it. Like there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing, and I think it's I think it's actually a great thing because you know you can you can upload a cover thing. You don't necessarily have to go through all the red tape. I mean, you probably yep. should legally, but you 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 know we we see covers probably on every every one of the shows that, like mine that yep. plays music uh, where people do covers and it's not. You know, yep. they didn't go through all the processes they're supposed to go through. But YouTube has created a way that you can do that. The artists will get royalties for it. and But some of them, and it really depends on the distributors and the, and the, uh, the copyright holder, you know, company. Because rarely is it ever, like, the actual band. It's always, like, yep. know, Universal or the know, copyright, yep. Warner or whatever. But sometimes, yep. sometimes they will say... Uh, no, we're just blocking everything. Any anybody tries to use this song, we're blocking it. I, I know, right? So. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> that it, that's where the frustration I think comes in. Yep, and, um, and and we're actually able to address I think some of that on the last the last section on these links. So yeah. All right. Well, let's head over to that. Okay. So, so uh, the, let's go to the uh, second link because that pre we're on eligibility for monetization. And okay. I thought this before we get to the claims and how to handle the disputes. Uh, let's answer the question: What content um is eligible uh you know for um for content id so again this is actually coming straight from the cd baby website so what content is eligible for youtube monetization and facebook instagram so first section here it says why uh eligibility matters and it says adding your music to video monetization services such as youtube content id and facebook rights manager is powerful because it automatically generates claims against other people's videos that match any portion of your music. Uh, even if you exclusively own all the content, not all content is suitable for claiming through these matching systems. For instance, mm -hmm. some, some genres uh, are uh, not appropriate for the service because they generate incorrect results called false claims. Um, they automatically exclude those genres. So, <laughs> so, so your latest noise song, it, it, may, it may not... Uh... Right. I know. <laughs> and so it's, it's very important that the music you are opting in is eligible to avoid falsely claiming other users' content, and then those rules apply to YouTube and Facebook. So that brings us to the question: For content ID, according to CD Baby's website, what is eligible? Right. So for Facebook and Instagram monetization, it basically says here: your content must be original. If you have any content you did not create yourself, it says to review. Uh, what's going to be listed below and basically it says the same thing for youtube monetization so let's get into what is not eligible um so the following examples are ineligible and cannot be used for youtube or facebook monetization according to the cd baby website first one is content licensed non-exclusively from a third party such as samples or beats that are not exclusively licensed Thomas, you might be able to expound on that. I don't deal with beats or anything like that. So if you can explain that, that would I would have no clue what that's talking about. 
Yeah, I'm I'm going to guess that uh they're probably talking about their like the like the beats and loops and stuff that are created uh contained in like GarageBand and Logic. That's actually um, later on. That this I think this okay. is talk that's actually uh cuz that's what I thought at first too. So if if anybody else if anybody in the comments, or or it could be like like old school hip hop where they where they took okay. like the 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 amen break or something and they sampled that or uh, oh, they sampled part saying. of a James okay. Brown song or something like that right uh, okay and they got permission to do that but it's still it's it's kind of like a cover in in a sense that would make sense that makes sense to me um, that's better than that's more than what I would have come up with because that's kind of out of my realm of expertise yeah it's a little uh, vague but. I, I would assume that. Yeah. So that if you know, if you can expound on that, Pete, anybody in the comments, just, just go ahead and, and uh, drop that. So the second thing that is ineligible for content ID is content released under Creative Commons or similar free open licenses. So when you upload a video to YouTube, you know how you can select standard license or Creative Commons. This makes sense because if you release a video and you select Creative Commons, well, you're basically saying, well, everybody can, you know, remix it or do what they want with it. Well, well, how does the content ID slap a content ID something that's Creative Commons when everybody has basically free reign to it? So that made perfect sense to me that, you know, any content released under Creative Commons can't isn't eligible for content ID. Yeah. The next one is that is ineligible ineligible for content ID is uh let me sure here we go. I'll look right. All all cover songs, regardless of cover license, including karaoke. Yeah. It makes sense because it's not yours. They have to slap right. a content. They have to slap a kind of content ID on it. If you covered it, it's not yours. That's why it's ine ineligible. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, that's, um, we, we kind of like uh, what we've been talking about there. Right, right. Next one that's ineligible for content ID uh, is public domain speeches, uh, recordings, or compositions. Um, again. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Makes sense. Um, so it's, it's kind of like if you use a clip, if you use a clip from like, mm -hmm. you know, some public domain of like, uh, you know, Franklin Delano Roosevelt giving a speech or something. My first thought was in Martin, your song. Martin Luther King. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, Martin Luther King. Yeah. Uh, F, uh, JFK or something like that. Um, right. You can't put that. Then you then you can't uh, use content right. ID on your song. Which makes sense because it's not yours. So the, right. the, the next that. The next thing that is ineligible is clips from other sources used under fair use principles. Uh, you or Pete might be able to expound on that. That's kind of out of my expertise there. So, yeah, well, so that wouldn't, that's not your garage band. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure what that one is either. Yeah, me neither. So anybody in the comments, um, um, if you, like I said, I'm no expert. Thomas and I are just trying to, you know, wiggle yeah. our way through this like you guys. So we're just musicians trying to make sense of all this. Um, so anyway, there's that. Uh, there is a link that can click there over fair use. So, um, but moving on to the next one, the next the next uh, thing that would be ineligible for content ID according to CD Baby's website is video gameplay audio. And in parentheses, it says by anyone other than the game's publisher. I think that kind of, self-explanatory yeah. makes sense you're not the creator so it, you're basically it's a copyright infringement on the person who created it um the next thing that's ineligible are songs already monetized on youtube by another distributor that makes sense um so there have been cases of people using one distributor and then going through another uh music licensing entity okay pete right here says fair use yeah. one be able to use a two second clip of samuel l jackson in a song under fair use but you can't content id it so there you go there you go um thanks pete that's that's why that's why you're there <laughs> um so yeah uh songs already monetized on youtube by another distributor that makes perfect sense um uh, the next uh category is um Content. This is the one you were talking about, Thomas. It says content yeah. containing. I ran. I ran into this problem with our Carousel album because I used uh, some loops and samples because we had a, an industrial thing going on. And uh, your expertise is creating those. Mine isn't. Mine is raw, straightforward rock and roll. And so I was trying to add things that, that was not my expertise. So 
Uh, content containing any audio library samples, sound effects, or production loops, and it says here such as GarageBand loops, those are not eligible for content ID. Now, what I will say is that is absolutely eligible to monetize. You can't, you, you yeah. absolutely can use audio library samples, sound effects, or production loops like in GarageBand, make a song, distribute it to CD Baby, DistroKid, TuneCore, wherever, and sell it on iTunes, make streaming royalties on the DSPs. That's absolutely legal. Content ID, we have to understand, is a completely different animal. It's a, that digital fingerprint. It's trying to find out who's it's trying to find out who's using your content so it can get you royalties. So this is a whole other animal. So the yeah. garage band loops, you're totally fine. It's absolutely legal to make a song and and upload it to your distributor and make money off of it. But you cannot opt that in for content ID. So yeah. that's the issue. I ran into that issue with our Carousel album because one, we had a cover song on it, and two, I had a buttload of uh, garage band loops on there, and I'm like, this is never. It's just it's gonna get flagged. Yeah. Now, well, and and the thing that happened too, and and I know Pete's talked about it before because that's where I've heard about it. Um, the, there were people that were putting up, like they would just take like the garage band loop and, and stretch it out like, yep. and they would upload that yep. as like a song. And then anybody that used yep. that song was getting like content claims and that money goes back to them. So it was like a big racket. So they're probably trying to rein that in. Now, the one that, the one that's kind of interesting to me that I, 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 man, I, I don't know the answer to Marshall had asked this a little bit ago. Um, like something like Easy Drummer Three, or like me, pretty much all the drums I use are samples. Uh, that's that's interesting. My buddy uses Easy Drummer. Uh, I'm an idiot yeah. and I just hand place every beat. But um, yeah, uh, that's a good question. I actually don't know that. Like uh, drums, drum samples, because pretty much all drums are samples anymore. Right, right. My buddy Paul, who lives like 20 minutes from us, uh, um, he uses Easy Drummer, and it, I wasn't even familiar with that because, like I said, I'm I'm just. I'm a guitarist just diving into all this and learning as I'm going. Um, like I, I hand place every single beat on our drums, every kick, snare, hi hat. I hand place everything because I I enjoy I play I play a little drums too, and I enjoy writing drums. Mm -hmm. The people that are actually good at it are able to use Easy Drummer and, and have these complicated fills and all this cool stuff that resources that I don't have. Um, that's a really good question. I I don't have the answer to that. Um, so that's I think that's worth looking into, uh, Pete. Anybody in the chat? Um, but that's 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 interesting. Um, and the My last guess, thing, and it's it's pure but, speculation, is that it's probably one of those things that, like, technically they could probably they right. could probably take an issue with it. But I think in in reality, it just there's you know it wouldn't even be practical to to try to um, you know crack down on that. Right. And you know what, what I will add, because I know Pete's added this. Uh, um, I know uh, Pete's touched on this, too, with um, if you change the audio enough, content yeah. ID isn't going to pick it up. So my my speculation for Easy Drummer would be you're not if you use Easy Drummer for fills or there's not like a straight like front to back in the song. You know, the song, the, a drum beat being just front to back. You're using different fills. You're using different fills and other people are using in different parts of your song. How, how the heck is content ID going to flag that? There's right. no way because you, you're, you're adding in, say, a triplet or a quad or you're adding, adding in a flam or a choke or whatever you're doing at a certain part of the song. Well, nobody else is going to use that in the exact same part the same way in their song. So I, I don't see how content ID would be able to identify that. Yeah, and um, I think I think it would come down to too. I know like a lot of those kind of programs will include like MIDI mm -hmm. arrangements, and I think if you use the MIDI arrangements, that's kind of like using a loop. But if you if you just per put the individual right. drum hits in yourself, then that's so probably set up by Marshall as as a good comment here. Uh, um, for the record, I've released forty six tunes, including covers, using Easy Drummer three. No claims as of yet. Maybe they're waiting for the big score. Um, so there you go. Someone yeah. who's used this and not had uh, any issues yet. Um, I imagine similar issues might come up too with like the 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 oh, auto this... drummer that's in like GarageBand and Logic because technically <laughs> that's generated, but it, right. you know it does kind of end up sounding a very pretty right. similar. So if you change the audio enough, um, Content ID isn't going to recognize it. 
Uh, and then the last section here is uh, compilations such as mashups, countdown lists, continuous DJ mixes, or full album sound recordings, which we already know YouTube put a ban on that anyway, that play within a single track are not eligible for content ID. That's a recent thing with YouTube where they don't allow to upload an artist to upload a full album. As a matter of fact, Thomas and I were just talking about this before the show. It, it even goes as far as uploading multiple songs from the same album in one upload. So I haven't looked into that uh, exhaustively. That's just what I've read. And that's- well, I've, I've kind of come to that theory as well. And I think it was something that actually I saw on CD Baby. So just uh, you know, a little bit of background for everybody. Like um, I do a live performance show on the weekend uh, on Saturdays. Usually I do my own original music. But uh, and, and Pete and Jade Starr also uh, do um, live performances on the weekends. And there have been occasions where we have done, um, you know, karaoke shows where where we sing along to karaoke tracks on YouTube. Um, and a lot of time, what I've noticed is that the ones where it's a variety of artists usually don't have a problem. But there's been an instance, so I know there's been two shows that Jade did. She did uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show and she did uh, one of the Counting Crows albums. And both of those got blocked. I did a show where it was all Nine Inch Nails, and that one got blocked. So my theory is they're looking, and when they see more than one song from the same album, and they don't even really consider whether it's a, the actual original version or not, they're, they're thinking, okay, you're trying to upload the album, and YouTube blocks it. Because yeah. it's a YouTube policy. That's that's what I'm kind of starting to suspect. And I actually I kind of think where the situation happened with my show a couple a uh, couple weeks ago. I think it might have been related to that, and it might not have actually been CD Baby because CD Baby doesn't, as far as I can tell, have a blocking policy. They usually just claim. Right, right, and that's even said. Actually, that segues perfect into the. Um... The next section, the whole reason why we're all here, the claims, disputes, and perm- permissions on YouTube. That that is the reason for this whole this whole stream. So yeah, uh, if you want to dive in, we could just dive into it. And, yeah, let's go. Um, cool. So this one is um, claims, disputes, and permissions on YouTube. So um, the opening says there. This article explains copyright claims on YouTube. Why you might be seeing one from CD Baby. Why you may not be seeing one how to dispute a claim in order to have it released from a video and how to request a manual claim. I thought that was interesting because Jade, I sent Jade something and um, I got an email back basically saying, or no, it was an email uh, because we're we're going on um, the the, the, um, uh, Thursday. We'll be on the show. And um, I got an email basically saying, uh, it was kind of a blanket email, so it wasn't addressed to us in particular, but it was basically saying for artists to whitelist their songs if uh, they have content ID. And I thought about, like, we, we don't have content ID, so I wasn't worried about it, but I thought about it and I'm like, I don't remember anywhere on CD Baby's upload process that al- it does not allow you to whitelist anything. And then when I read this article, you have to do it a different way. And so it will get into that. So I, I found that very interesting that it is listed here kind of how to, to, claim your own let cd baby know that you want to claim your own monetization for this channel or this song or something so yeah anyway um uh let's get into the first section is again again for those that maybe joined in or didn't catch the other two links these links are they're all uh, in the description right they're all in the description thomas added uh, all the links that i i sent him they're all there for you to click on later and do your own research uh, we also these, these ones that we're looking at right now. They're the the top three links. Th- these three are going to give you the rundown uh, in order, start to finish. What is content ID according to CD Baby's website, all the way to how do I dispute uh, a claim uh, with them? Um, also, right, so let's fi- let's find out how do how do we do how do we deal with this? Let's jump in. So the all first right. section says, "Why am I seeing a claim from CD Baby?" Okay, so according to their website, it says the claim notice you're seeing in your YouTube account is actually correct for the YouTube monetization service you opted into with CD Baby. You've received what is called a content ID claim. This is not a copyright strike. It says the claim from CD Baby means that YouTube's content ID system has identified your music in the video and has placed a claim for monetization. 
This tells YouTube to place an advertisement on the video, uh, which then allows CD Baby to collect uh, ad revenue on your behalf. And then they go on to say, rest assured that CD Baby does not own your content or copyright. Uh, we're just administering its use on YouTube as a result of your participation in the blah, 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 on and on. Right. So <laughs> it goes to the uh, the next section, you know, okay, so here's what we're here for, what triggered the stream. Um, disputing, releasing, and handling monetization yourself. So here it says when to contact YouTube. According to CD Baby's website, it says the best and quickest way to have CD Baby release a claim is to dispute the claim within your YouTube account. Um, this link, I think it's talking about the information in this link that we're on. Oh, no, wait a second. There's actually a link there. It's purple. So you can click on this link right there. It says this link, which is in purple, shows you exactly how the process works and the steps to take within <clears throat> within YouTube. Oh, it, it takes you to the um, – so this is how to dispute claims on – this would be like more if you got your own – like if – Kind of like if your your own music triggered a, a thing on your own channel, which okay. can okay. which can happen. Um, yep. Th this is how you That's would dispute it with with YouTube, which is a whole separate kind of process. There you go. Um, so it says um, this that link right that link right there shows you exactly how the process works and steps to take within YouTube uh, to dispute the claim. Uh, it says below is below is what we this is what's interesting. Below is what we'd like you to include in your dispute. If you are a CD Baby artist, now this is disputing a content claim, right? It says, uh, for instance, Thomas, Jeff, Pete, any of you guys have this issue and you want to dispute it. If you're a CD Baby artist, your dispute must include the following note. Now, again, this has to be handled within your YouTube channel. So uh, this is the way they CD Baby wants it addressed when you're the artist addressing CD Baby over this issue. My name is so-and-so. I am a CD Baby artist, and then list your username. Um, it says, and I wish to, your, so that would be your CD Baby uh, artist username. Um, and I wish to handle my own monetization for this video. It says, our content administrators will review all the disputes received and release the claim on the video. If you fail to enter the above statement in your YouTube dispute, if you're a CD Baby artist, including the CD Baby username, like my username is different from the band name that I have registered. It says, um, the claim may be reinstated, so it is very important to include the statement and, and username. So again, my name is so-and-so, my name is Nathan Petty. I am a CD Baby artist, and then I'll write my username, and I wish to handle my own monetization on this video. That's how yeah. CD Baby wants their artist to address them over a claim. So it's very it's very important that you, you have this format exactly. Right. And so here, here's where it covers you guys, you know, like a you, Pete, Jeff, Chad, um, uh, you know, Frank, even everybody. If you are a channel owner with permission from a CD baby artist, or you are the, or you are the CD baby artist and you gave permission to use the music ad free, our claim can be disputed from inside the YouTube account. It is important that a share, this part is important. It is important that a shareable link to the document that shows permission given to use the music ad free is included. So that would be like Thomas, your submission form. Mm -hmm. You know how you're in submission form at the bottom. You have the artist uh, check mark the box that they give you consent for the music to be played. What I always screenshot that. I don't just because I'm paranoid. I always when I get done <laughs> submitting, I always screenshot that. And then when Thomas confirms, I always screenshot that too. I don't know why. I just do. Um, so that. That would be that shareable link, um, that document. I'm assuming that would be something that you would want to provide CD Baby going, here's my submission form. Here's them clicking on it, giving them, you know, giving me their blessing to play this. And if mm -hmm. you can provide that, it, sound, it sounds like that's all that you would need is this here, here it is, you know, and the proof that the artist gave me their consent. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess that would. That, Co that covers that right. That covers that. So, if you're a channel <laughs> owner and you want to address them, I'll just read the bottom part. It is important that a shareable link to the document that shows permission given to use the music ad free is included. Um, and then, it, it, the next section says, if you are an artist or content creator disputing a claim by a CD Baby artist, uh, the same applies. Um, so, 
the next section it says my video was now blocked. i would think i would think though I, I will say from my end uh i don't know that that would that would actually this part would actually work per se because i'm giving them permission to that like the the way it's worked now maybe i could change the wording but the way it's worded right now is i'm giving permission the artist is giving me permission to play the song they're not giving me permission to dispense with right so you and me weren't so. change the you change the wording something to happen to do maybe uh, uh yeah royalties or per, maybe something addressing that mm -hmm. the permission because because um for instance we just had an opportunity a couple weeks ago that we signed um uh basically waiving any royalty the, the exposure was was um outweighed the right. uh royalty perks and so i'm actually really excited to share this news in a couple of weeks but we had we had a really big opportunity come our way a couple of weeks ago and awesome. uh i was i've been filling out the information and and getting and, and it's all squared away and 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 we should know in a couple of weeks um but i i i had to waive the royalty so it, it, in getting my point being on that section maybe something that the artist clicks on maybe waiving maybe waiving the royalty or maybe waiving or, or giving you permission to split uh the royalty with it just i i don't know the specifics of that but maybe if it's just worded differently you would probably yeah. know a better way to word it than me but that's that's really good to know so um, yeah might have to look into at upgrading that uh that language there um isn't it crazy? Yeah, it all comes <laughs> down to language. This is why I'm not going through the addendum because everybody here would find out how dumb I really am. Because if I went through the uh, the sync, the uh, social video monetization and the uh, sync licensing addendum, I would sound like a complete idiot. I mean, it's worded in ways. You know, Tanya who does real estate. I'm happy through it. Mm -hmm. She's like, yeah, you would have to get a lawyer. She's like, this is so convoluted and it, it's the here to four on you know on this day. It, oh, you know, dude. And, and then like a fourth paragraph is connected from like three paragraphs back and you're like, well, it, it, it identified what the language was here. And I'm like, I don't have a clue from that. My brain yeah. went to sleep 10 minutes ago. They make that stuff confusing on purpose. Oh, so. dude, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> um, okay, so the next section, it says, yes. um, I think this next section has to do with what we were talking about earlier. So yeah. I'll, I'll touch on it briefly because we, we kind of already touched on it. Um, it says, my video was blocked on YouTube. And this is talking about YouTube. Okay, so YouTube implemented a content management rule in August of 2019 that blocks all uploads of an entire album. It says occasionally YouTube will also block any video that contains two or more tracks from the same album. We kind of touched on that earlier. Um, you know, again, it, it keeps repeating on the CD Baby website right here that you can dispute the claim from within your YouTube account. Uh, and, and that pretty much the rest of it is we, we covered that. Um, so I'm trying to find the next section that's pertinent. Um, this one is when to contact CD baby. Okay. If I don't see any claims on my videos yet, I, we're not worried about that. What we're worried about is um, the claim has actually happened and we're trying to address that. Now let's uh, just, let's just pause right here and just kind of acknowledge though. Um, if you do the thing that you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. um, where you can opt out of content ID, then you don't have to right. worry about any of this. Not any. Nope. Cause you're not, you're not, you're not using it. System. You're not in the content ID system. So that's like us. We so ideally, <laughs> ideally, if, especially if you plan to have your music played on, on, on various shows and things, the, the best way to do it is just to not opt into or opt out of content ID. That particular option is definitely works best for us. Um, I think every artist, every artist is, is looking for something different, right? Like, um, I know some of the vitriol that was going back and forth between the two dis distributors on here. I, I saw some comments that were saying, uh, CD baby's the worst or this or that. And, and my, my concern was not so much defending CD baby. I don't want CD baby artists to be collateral damage and get blacklisted from channels that could be given their music exposure. And so the thing with um, opting in or out of content ID is I think what's the most important thing is as an artist, you have to choose what path you want to go down, what's best for your music career, right? So for us, we chose exposure because I'm not making Jack, we're not making Jack squat 
you know, doing it on streaming or this stuff anyway. So I'm like, you know what? If we, if, if say this opportunity that presented itself to us, if it, if it opens up other doors and starts to take off, I might reconsider some things. Um, but the thing is, is as an artist, what I, what I would like to say to the channel owners here who I am extremely grateful and humbled um, by the opportunity you've given us is sometimes if an, if an artist chooses content ID and there's an issue with CD Baby, I totally understand the channel owners it would be a headache for me and I would hate dealing with it. I can't imagine you guys, every stream going, yeah. okay, well, what's going to pop up now? Yeah. You know, it, that would, that would just my nervous system. I don't think I can handle that. That's why uh, every time, every time I end the you yeah. rock show, and oh, then there's man. a couple hour period where I'm like, okay, yeah, please let, you know, whatever comes through, there's going to be claims. There's going to be copyright claims. I know. Just don't you're, let anything get blocked. <laughs> oh dude. I, I, I'm telling you my nervous system would be able to handle that. But what I would say is, the artist, just because an artist going through CD Baby's content ID may raise yeah. an issue for the channel owner, doesn't make CD Baby bad and horrible to work with it because that that distributor is still collecting money for that artist, and some and and a specific artist may not choose the route that say we're going with. Like we choose for you guys to, 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 for us to have that exposure for the platform you guys are providing, because first of all, I love the friends we're making. I love the, mm -hmm. the, the connections, the relationships, um, obviously the exposure, um, the validation, like all, all of that stuff. Um, that's the route we chose. But if another artist goes to CD baby and the content ID is, is causing issues with the channel owner, that's not CD Baby's fault. They're just collecting money on behalf of that artist. And that artist right. might be thinking, I don't want to say bigger picture, because to me, what, what this community is doing is a pretty big picture. But another artist might be thinking in, in another way. They might be more geared towards sync licensing. They might be geared more towards TV, commercials, uh, other press-related opportunities. Um, and they might go, well, I don't really care about submitting our songs to, to maybe individual YouTube channels because – maybe maybe they're they're going through another um uh i don't want to say distribution but a pr company right i i've dude you wouldn't believe since we hit this community how many i have so many emails lined up from pr companies like that are like hey we can get you that i'm like yeah, I, i'm good yeah. I, I, I love most that. of those emails are not <laughs> of course of course they want you. of course they want you you're gonna pay yeah. them we're gonna make money off of you it has nothing yeah. to do with promoting your stuff i mean i mean most of them you're are not on the up and up <laughs> no, they, you're you're a paying customer to them, so of course they make they make you sound like you're on a pedestal. Yeah. Um, but um, oh, another tip for anybody here: if any if any place is guaranteeing you streams, they're botted. Don't even go through them. Um, yeah. That's just that's that's a guaranteed bot play. They're using bot playlists. But you know, if content ID raises an issue for uh, a channel owner. I, I wouldn't put the blame on CD Baby and say how horrible they are. It's 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 up no. to the artist to figure out what's best for their career. And for us, I would agree with you and most of the comments in this section that I never liked Content ID from the day it came out. I'm just not a fan of it. I, yeah. I know that there are benefits, and I see why it's there. I agree with Pete that it, there are things that have cleaned up a lot on YouTube. I agree with that. Me, just speaking for me, as an independent artist, I don't like the tracking and tracing. I don't, there's a, that level of control of CD baby. Also, it gives them access to your YouTube and your analytics and a, all the information there. I don't want their sticky fingers on my YouTube channel. That's just, that's just me. Um, I see where the benefit is. I personally, it's not for me. I think I would rather monetize in other ways and we've taken steps to do that. So, that's that was that would be my defense, not necessarily a CD baby, but of the artists using CD baby is if you're a channel owner, uh, don't don't necessarily look at CD baby like they're this monster or they're horrible or the worst to work with. OK, well, their content ID policy may flag and there may be this issue, but they're just collecting royalty money for their customer, for their client, for their artist. And I'm not going to fault them for that. So. No. We've just chosen to go a different route, and that's the non-content ID because I love sharing our music with you guys, and I don't want the hassle. So 
that was just our personal choice. So I just wanted to address that, you know, that we don't make sure we don't demonize the distributors or the artists. Yeah. For, like for us, I think they all have positives and negatives. And like, I'm looking at, you know, CD baby wasn't something I ever really looked into. I kind of like some of the kind of, some of the aspects of like where you just pay for each release and it's there and it's not going to go anywhere. I kind of, I kind of like that aspect of it. Uh, right. And, and I, I like, um, some of the way that they, they deal with, um, you know, more of these like licensing things. Um, there's also stuff about it that I see that I'm like, well, distro kid, they, yeah. you know, they make that a lot easier. Um, so sure, it's given, sure. you know, it's a, you got, you got to look and weigh I all do. your options and, and you'll find, I, I would agree with that with you. on the content ID side. I agree with you hundred percent. I will, I think distro kids option for content ID personally, there are other reasons we're not going through them. But I, I agree with you 100% on the content ID. I I would prefer DistroKid personally. That's, yeah, because DistroKid kind yeah. of um, like actually when you release a, a, an album through DistroKid, um, it's an extra thing that you can add right. on. But it's, right, not, right. it's not the default position, you know. Right. And and when you're going through there you on CD Baby, like we discussed at the beginning of this video for those that couldn't tune in then, is there's an option for CD Baby when uh, they offer CD Baby Boost you can select the toggle switch off on um, the, there's a sync licensing, um, social video monetization, sync licensing uh, option. You can just toggle off and you can only have them opt you in for the MLC and sound exchange. So you can opt out of that during the upload. And even if you, like I'll say again, if you were like me and you woke up the next morning and you opted in for all of it and you woke up and went, Oh man, I got a sick feeling in my stomach. I don't want to do this. I opted out the next day with no problems. If your album is already distributed with CD Baby, though, you do need to email them and give them notice um, before you toggle the switch off. That way, they can let all the all the places that are using Content ID they can let their partners know, hey, remove their stuff from the Content ID system. They, so our album wasn't distributed, so we, I was just able to toggle the switch. But if yours is distributed already, they do need prior notice. I, I thought it was 24-hour notice, but yeah. So um, if, if, you want, if you're ready to move to the, um, the uh, next section, uh, you know, I'm yeah. ready to go. Um, so... Okay, so how to submit? It's funny that comment you just put up on the screen talked about whitelisting. Okay, the problem with whitelisting should be easy. Uh, I used to pick up. This is from the Mix Club. I used to pick up yep. the phone and call my dude, and it was done. Now he is gone, and they have made it hard. I agree. Uh, anyway, we don't want to do this all the time, you know. And so I would, yeah, I would. I agree with that statement a hundred percent. It's why we're not opted in for content ID. <laughs> Um, so other, the other, the ones that do choose artists that do choose good on you. Uh, you have that right to do that and you will probably collect yep. more, money, more money than us, more power to you. I just, we chose to go a different route. So that whitelisting segues to this, how to submit a manual claim request. I didn't even know this was possible until I read this two hours ago. So let's jump in this together. Um, it says note, this is from this again, this is from the CD baby website says manual claim requests are reviewed by our content administrators. If the use of the music and or the content in the video are found to violate our partner's guidelines, the claim will not be placed on the video. As a reminder, they give you a what is eligible. That's everything we just discussed on this link on this page. So submit a manual claim request here. There's a link there. You can click there and uh, submit the manual request there. Thomas is going to it right now. Um, there's looks it looks like that's the form right there yeah so uh you can click right there it'll take you to that form to submit a manual claim this is what they want you include to include please include the following information they want you to include your cd baby username uh youtube video link uh i'm assuming that's the video link for the channel that's playing it that's what i'm assuming i'm not sure if it's clear on that i i would assume that's what it because you're disputing a claim um your artist name, song song title that is featured in the video. There you go. Okay, so it is that. That answered it right there. Yeah. Um, song title that is featured in the video. ISRC, for those of you who don't know, that's your identifier number uh, when you register your album for each song, your unique uh, number for that song. And then the start time and end time is talking about the track, the song. 
It says timestamps need to be as accurate as possible. So please list the time when the audio starts as well as the time when the audio stops in the video. Add additional segments if your content appears in more than one part of the video. So here's the section here, how to submit a manual claim. Um, and there's the form that Tom's clicked on right there. Um, it also gives you an option of opting out of the program. If this is what I think it is, this is, we, this is what we had done. It says as an alternative, it is. You can opt out of CD Baby's YouTube monetization service completely. This is what we did the morning after. <laughs> this will, it says this will remove your music from YouTube's content ID system and stop claims from being placed on your channel as well as on any other third party upload videos that contain your music. To do this, I already explained it. Log into your CDB yep. account. Here it says to click sync YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram licensing. What they mean by that is when you go to the section when you are uploading your album, that there's a section that says CD Baby Boost right on top. When when you get through all the, all the stuff the meta you've uploaded your metadata, you've uploaded your uh, songs, you've named everything, you you know picked your where you want to distribute it. One of the sections is CD Baby Boost. When you get to that section, that's what it's talking about. Uncheck the sync YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram licensing option. There's a toggle switch. Switch that. It'll turn it off. Like I said, you can opt in for it and change your mind. It just It's just based on if your album has been distributed. If it's not distributed, you can toggle it instantly like we did because we had a pre-release date. Our, our, our music was not distributed yet. And the very next morning, I woke up and opted out of it. If your album has been distributed, you need to email CD, CD Baby, I think, 24 hours beforehand and let them know, hey, we're, we want to opt out of the content ID you know, uh, option. But you can opt out. Um, and I think that pretty much covers uh, everything from what is con according to CD Baby. It covers everything on what is content ID, what is eligible for content ID, and opting out of content ID. I think that's pretty much everything that's listed on their site there are a lot there there are quite a few links that i i sent thomas in the video description yeah be sure to go and, uh, and check those out check out because, pete's too pete's yeah. videos on content id excellent i matter of fact i rewatched them again and they covered a lot of the things that i was already going to cover he's he's always on top of it so links in the video description uh have uh, a lot more information even than what we're covering here so yeah but this was really good to get the perspective from somebody who is using CD sure. Baby and is a CD Baby artist because sure. all this stuff was totally foreign to me. I know how DistroKid works, but, you know, it's good to know because I know, um, you know, you're certainly not the only artist around that's using this service and uh, yeah, a, lot sure. of, uh, a lot of other folks are using it as well. And um, that was my main concern was when I started seeing comments and I understand, I, 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 I totally understand the comments, right? You know, the people that are CD Baby's horrible, they're bad. I get it. I totally get it. You know, when you're dealing with your channel, <laughs> you're, you're dealing with, you're like, why am I blocked again? This is ridiculous. Like why? I get, I totally get it. But I, I was just, I was seeing a lot of um, attacking on that and I'm going, yeah. and I'm, they're going, the artists are just collateral damage. It's not their fault. Like we chose CD Baby because it's a one-time fee. And when I got sick, our music probably would have been removed because we would not have been able to afford that annual fee to keep our music up online. And because we're with CD Baby, it stayed up online. And that's just the option I wanted. we wanted to go with for us was that. I will add, on top of the front fee, what CD Baby does, um, paying the $9.99 for basic distribution or paying the $40 for opting in for CD Baby Boost, and that that's for both single, excuse me, or album. What I will say is where they make up for it is they take 9% of um, the cuts, like your royalties and stuff, and I know DistroKid, you get 100% of, of those. So I will say that in, in the long run, annually, you're going to pay to keep up with DistroKid and Tune yeah. 4 and stuff. Now, DistroKid uh, does have a thing. They have um, Leave a Legacy. So it's an extra thing that you pay on the end of, and I haven't done it. I'll be honest with you. I haven't done it. Um, mm -hmm. But whenever you go to upload your song or later on after the fact, I think you can still 
change it. Um, but you, you pay an extra fee and it's leave a legacy and, and in theory, at least it will be there in perpetuity. Right. Right. But, but okay. it seems like, CD I, I Baby, that, so it seems like CD baby gives you that, you know, kind of like as part of the deal. Right. As soon as, soon as you pay the nine ninety nine for basic, or if you pay the 40 for, as soon as you pay, it's just an upfront fee. It's, you never have to maintain it. It's just up there. Theoretically, like I said, where we talk about web three and six G seven G and everything that's coming like, uh, you know, uh, theoretically, you pay that one-time fee; it's up there forever. So, um, I don't like the nine percent cut that they take, but I really like the one-time, just only paying the one-time fee. There are pros and cons with all of the distributors. Um, yeah, the one like, thing that yeah. is kind of shady for me, I will mention in full transparency with CD Baby, the one thing that I find a little shady is when you get to CD Baby Boost, there's a drop-down box. When you uncheck uh, the sync licensing part right you know you have sound exchange mlc and then you have all the sync licensing when you <laughs> when you click that toggle switch for the first time there's a drop down box that goes um you don't want us to collect more money for you for and i'm like that is that almost seems like a fear tactic to me like because when that box pops up your first thought is oh no i did something wrong and so it just seems a little shit on the CBB and I guys in CBB, if you're watching, please change the verbiage in that drop down box. If you opt out sync licensing, that seems a little shady to me. Okay. So I'm just going to put yeah. that out. I'm We're not looking always, to get sponsored by them, so I don't care. No, but, uh, you know, it, it's always good to have clarity on, on what you're doing. So you, yeah. so you know, you know, um, yeah. and, uh, it seems like, you know, if you actually read through all of this, some of it's a little bit vague, but there's a pretty good, pretty good guideline of how to deal with this stuff um, yeah no i think it's good guideline. I, I think it's it, it's uh compiling those three links even though they don't make it easy to find um i think between those three links it gives you a lot of general like overall information direction how you know how to dispute a claim um it gives you their i didn't know there was a form you could fill out now i do yeah. Um, and it, and it, and it, and it walks you through it. So I think, I think that's, um, good. Some, again, some of the links that are in the video description, Thomas added for this video, they're really good. There's good info there. There's one guy that explains CD baby boost and he actually gets into like the cuts and everything that I'm like, this is, it's way more information than I could provide. It, it's a good link. So if you get a chance, watch, you don't have to read if you're not a CD baby artist, if you're a channel owner and you're interested in reading their addendums on, um, sync licensing and social video monetization, I think it might be a good read for like Pete or you or Jeff or Chad, Frank, I think reading their addendums might at least once through to go, Oh, cause that's the official agreement, the official verbiage you're signing the agreement you're signing to. That's the video. Th that guy has other videos and he, he, he might be, I think he is um, sponsored by them, but he gives good information though. He has one where he, he breaks, he breaks down, I think the royalty cut and um, exactly um, what CD baby offers pretty well. So he's got other videos too, that are, that are uh, real helpful. Again, um, there's another website, um, the uh, Indie Academy um uh ryan i don't know how to pronounce his last name why check or i forgot how to pronounce it but the indie music academy if you get a chance to look at the indie music academy the guy's got just an incredible catalog of videos of copywriting and content id and just strategy and i mean so many yeah he excellent so so many videos that can help uh, independent artists so as a matter of fact he had um someone uh, officially from Spotify on explaining uh, some of their uh, stuff too. So he's got a lot of really good information uh, in his videos for independent artists. So the Indie Music Academy. It looks really, it looks like a really, uh, really comprehensive and informative. He's site. got so like much, good, so much good information on his channel. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Crimson, uh, Nate, for uh, coming on here. And, I appreciate uh, it. It's great to have uh, someone with the, you know, you, you've looked into this and really, uh, really got some, some excellent information, especially for, uh, yeah. for those of us uh, out there that are using 
uh, CD Baby, don't want to get into trouble. I think the biggest thing that I learned is this whole thing with the uh, with the yeah. albums, and 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 I th- I think that might have actually factored into what happened with the show, um, where it kind of uh, even though they were two separate artists, I think it like maybe they were in some kind of a collection together or something, and it it created a false positive there for being an album and uh, explaining why some of these like karaoke shows have gotten taken down too. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I just tripped. And, I just tripped. He's our music attorney. <laughs> I just, I just tripped and fell into a hole with all this stuff. I have no clue what yeah. I'm doing. This is, this is a day to day. I'm just, I'm like you guys. I'm just figuring this out. I'm just, I'm just a musician. I'm like, I, I'm just trying to figure all this stuff out. It's so complicated. Yeah, it, it really is. It's a, it's all a mind, my, it's a minefield that you have to navigate with all this. We're stuff all in and, this. I mean, we're all in this together, man. Yeah. I mean, if anybody has better information, drop it in the comments, you know, or let us know because I'm not, I'm no expert. Like I said, I tripped and fell into a hole. Like you, you know, it, so I, I'm always willing to stretch and grow and find out things that I didn't know. So yeah, well, we're always learning, and that's that's the important thing. Um, uh, but, uh, now you're a little bit, now you're all a little bit better informed. Thanks to Nate, uh, for, uh, you know, uh, how we can, how we can send our music in, maybe not have it, uh, block the show. And, uh, and, and so this is, this is really great to know and, uh, make sure you check out those links. Uh, Nate, is there anything, uh, I know you got the big Jade star interview coming mm-hmm. up at the end of the week. Um, uh, yeah. anything else that you want, uh, everybody to know before we kind of wrap this, uh, bring this thing in for a landing um yeah i mean just the um the video uh premiere uh we uh have um our music video glitch um actually uh we worked with an old friend that we hadn't worked with in a long time um our Uh our buddy uh vic mendoza over at uh he runs a vix cover art he's a photographer videographer now independent filmmaker he's got a He's got a, a three-part episode um, series called Unshadow, kind of about like a futuristic shadow gov- government. Um, he's got a three-episode series, and uh, our song Glitch is featured just briefly in uh, episode two of uh, Unshadow. And um, I reached out to him, and he uh, we put something together for this video. We basically used footage from his episodes. He has a episode three they're working on. It should be released. He doesn't have a release date, but they're working on that. Um, so we uh kind of combined we we joined forces again and uh it's really cool because like i i do all of our music videos and stuff and this was really nice where just to be able to shoot me and tanya's parts and he did the editing he used footage from his films his his three episodes and uh he did the vfx and and i didn't have to do any of the editing all i had to do was just shoot our parts and uh so it, this it comes out this Thursday in between uh, Jade Show and Fifteenth Bends. It's going to drop at eight thirty two, as Fifteenth Bend would rip me about. And the reason for that time is um, there is competition when you up when you premiere a video right on the mark eight o'clock, eight thirty nine, whatever. You have to yeah. remember there are millions of other people doing the same thing. So if you if you choose like eight oh one, eight oh two, for us eight thirty two. The algorithm picks up yours and it, there's less competition for it to pump out videos because i noticed one of thomas's videos went live at 659 one day and i was i was on a panel with <laughs> and i go i will bet you thomas is doing what we're doing um no you know the reason for that was that i think that was uh thomas Christ live the reason yes. for that is because you have to have the countdown. I now I'm I'm uh, I'm not right, a big. Right. I, I've talked about it before. I'm not a big lover of countdowns, and sometimes like the you know five minute countdowns and stuff, and everybody's just sitting there like, all right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. in order to have the show start at like seven p.m., I had to make it start at six fifty nine. So there's a one minute countdown, and then then if you if you get there at seven o'clock, it'll be right on the right on the money. That that's smart too that's smart too but that that's the reason we have it at uh 8 32 so we have that music video collaborating with our friend vic mendoza with his unshadow series uh footage that is uh in this music video it, it came out really i'm super excited uh we have a teaser up on our channel if you haven't seen it yet uh on our shorts um so that comes out thursday at 8 32 between uh our interview with uh jade and uh and 15th show uh that's on right after so um 
yeah, I'm, I'm really, we're really excited to share the video. I, we've never done this much VFX or this. It, it's always been raw footage kind of for us. So we're really excited to share this. That's but awesome. Other, other than that, I'm thank you so much for uh, having me on. And, and, and yeah. I, I just wanted to give a kind of a, a, a little a voice and kind of in defense of all the CD baby artists on here and just go that they're just collateral damage if there's anything going on with the content ID. So don't don't blame, you know, all the channel owners yeah. out there. You know, they're just artists trying to get their stuff out and CD there, as you've seen here, how you can dispute a claim and maybe avoid, possibly avoid, you know, what's happening in the future. I, I just want everybody from um, any distributor to have a chance on any of these channels. And I, I just kind of got concerned with the CD when your stream yeah. was taken down because I saw a lot of vitriol between um, district and CD baby artists. And I just kind of went, you know, I kind I just want I don't want necessarily I don't want necessarily to defend CD baby. I just wanted to get on and go, let me give the information so people are better informed and maybe this will prevent it or help people make their decision as simple as if they want or exactly. if they don't want to opt out of content ID, this is what comes with it. You can opt out like us, or you have the freedom to to go for it, but there it might cause some complications like this and if there are complications here are the links to dispute it or to address it so i just wanted to provide information that's all so i thomas i appreciate you thank you very much well i i appreciate uh all the incredible work it's been sending me emails <laughs> like crazy with all kinds of I, great I, links we'll, and everything we'll get an email um, from me until our next song submission i promise yeah <laughs> uh and thank you so much frank for the uh donate the two donations i think in this uh in this stream you are awesome you rock and uh nate you rock as well oh, thanks. um we so thank it. you again for uh for uh coming on the show uh i'm gonna i'm gonna set you backstage but uh hang around uh we'll debrief after the show i'm gonna just wrap things up real quick here so uh thank you thanks everybody all right well there we have it that is uh all the information uh hopefully that uh that you need to know about uh, content ID about uh, about uh, uh, CD Baby and uh, hopefully we are all more well informed and uh, thanks again to Nate for that. Um, now don't forget uh, tomorrow we got You Rock coming up so there's still a couple more hours if you want to get a last minute track in uh, go ahead and send that on in bit.ly forward slash You Rock submit. If you haven't hit that like button hit the like button. By the way uh, I'll just mention real, you know I'm getting up there Close to uh, close to the 800 subscriber mark. So if you are watching out there and you're lurking or you're watching on replay and you're not subscribed, that might be a good time. Uh, if you want to hit that subscribe button, uh, I'd really, really appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Cold Hicker. Let's get to 800 subs. Yes, uh, 800 uh, is uh, is within uh, within the sights. So uh, thank you all so much uh, once again. And uh, I will uh, I will see you uh, tomorrow. Don't forget uh, you got uh, Leela is doing a live performance tomorrow, uh, and uh, that'll be at uh, 4:20 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and then you got Jade Star. I'm sure she's got some wonderful and amazing app to show us. That'll be at 5 p.m. And then uh, or no, that'll be at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time. And all the times change. So then 7 p.m. we'll be rocking. Uh, you rock. So uh, I will see you then. And uh, until then, much love, take care, and most importantly, keep rocking, everybody. Bye-bye.